great opportunity to listen to a few successful young minds in the world of STEM. And now I'll be handing it off to our summit coordinator, Maribel, who will be leading the panel discussion. Thank you. Okay. So, um, hello, everybody. My name is Mirabel, and I'm going to be moderating today's successful youth panel. So, today, um, to kickstart this section of the summit, I'm just going to quickly introduce our wonderful panelists. So, uh, starting on the right, we have uh, Elijah Steiner, we have uh, Kayla Grega, uh, Rushi Nath. Um, Sophia uh, Kafaki and Harni Saravana Kumar. Can we give a warm welcome to the panelists? Okay, guys, so this is how it's going to work. I will ask one question, and we're just going to go um, from the right to the left, and all our panelists are going to answer this question, okay? So to start, our first question is, tell us about yourself. What accomplishments have you made, and how did you get to where you are today? So let's start with Elijah. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Elijah Steiner, and I'm currently a student at the University of Toronto, Mississauga here. Um, and I'm in the Digital Enterprise Management Program, which uses digital technologies to solve business needs in creative ways. And I think I got to this point because I love starting uh, businesses. Um, I think in elementary school, I started my first candy business operation. Uh, I saw a need in my school to sell um, lifesavers and I got a bunch of my friends together and then we all sold like these little candies um, to the entire student population. And we made like a hundred bucks, which uh, at the time was a lot. Um, and so I took that love for like creating businesses and I've been creating businesses since uh, middle school to high school and in university as well. Um, and I thought that uh, using digital technologies and the new age of business would be the best way to do that. So that's why I'm currently in the um, DEM program. Uh, yeah, that's all. Hi, my name is Sophia Faki. I am also a student here at UTM, and I'm studying environmental science. So kind of in the name, environmental science. Um, I got interested in the program because uh, it's kind of kind of boring, actually. <laughs> I used to watch a lot of like nature documentaries, and then I watched the behind the scenes of a nature documentary, and I was like, that looks kind of cool. And I searched it up and I saw wildlife biologists and I was like, and I stuck with that and I'm here now. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. I'm, you know, I've been part of like a few different projects, like the sustainability ambassador group, and I'm going to be doing a research opportunity project next year with my professors studying, you know, coyotes and the urban environment. So yeah, it's pretty interesting, pretty cool. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Arushi, and I'm a grade eight student from here in Toronto. And I'm really passionate about astronomy, science, and technology. And for the last four or five years, I've been making projects related to those subjects. And um, some accomplishments that I've had, um, well, actually, just a couple of weeks ago, I was in Alberta for the Canada Wide Science Fair. I know some of you guys have also participated. And I was able to get the top project award in innovation um, this year. And this was for my project on finding, analyzing asteroids to find their physical properties. And I actually was able to win this um, award two times in a row. And in September, I will be representing Canada at the European Union contest for young scientists in Belgium. And yeah. Hey everyone, my name is Harini and I am a 16 year old innovator currently focusing on genetic editing as well as microbiology and recently carbon capture. So some of my recent projects include trying to cure malaria using gene drives and again gene editing, studying beta thalassemia, which is a blood disorder, as well as creating a sustainable fabric line which makes clothes actually photosynthesize. Additionally, I also tabled a little bit in coding and I've made projects and app demos for companies like IKEA, Microsoft, and and Google, and yeah. 
Hello, everyone. My name is Kayla. I am a recent graduate from UTM. I just graduated this past semester. I finished with an honors Bachelor of Science, did some studying in biology, chemistry, forensics, and sociology. Right now, I'm taking some time for myself, but I do some research with the sociology department at UTM still, as well as my own personal research in environmental pursuits. All right. All right, it's great to hear from all our new innovators of tomorrow. So now let's get started with the actual questions. So my first question to you guys is, what or who motivates you to pursue a career in STEM? And can you tell me about your story? So let's start with, um, let's start with Kayla. Perfect. Ooh, we're still on. Wonderful. Okay. Um, what motivates me in STEM? I think the number one thing that motivates me in STEM is just seeing the way that our world's progressing socially and environmentally. I think that there's been a lot of new inventions. Um, I'm not sure how many of you follow the news, but you know, an example would be Elon Musk's new Neuralink. That's pretty cool, right? Um, so I think that there's just so much ability to um, pave your own way. And there's so many different fields of study that that's kind of what keeps me going. There's always something new. There's always something interesting that can be improved upon. Touching upon what Kayla said as well, I would say this almost the same thing inspires me as well to just keep on going. Again, I do focus a lot more in the field of medicine and the inter intersection with tech. So always advancing different medical procedures and different ways that we look at things is definitely something that drives me forward just to see how far things can go and how um, greatly we can innovate for tomorrow. Yeah, so for me, I think, um, like, I'm really interested in Ash brought me, and I think that has started, like, a long time ago when I was just six or seven, barely conscious, but, um, yeah, so I, I own an apartment in, I mean, my parents own an apartment in Toronto, so um, I love going on the balcony and looking at the sky, trying to pick up um, patterns in the stars, which I later learned were constellations. And um, yeah, I, we got our first telescope when I was nine years old, and I remember spending countless nights just observing the sky, trying to look at planets, looking at Saturn's rings. And um, later on, I joined the Ross Chamical Study of Canada, which is actually a great group. If anyone else is interested in astronomy, I recommend you join it. Um, so Ross Chamical Study of Canada, they have um, an observatory in Collingwood, and I visit there every year. And they have a huge telescope, which allows you to really view the deep sky objects and um, nebulas. And I think after going there, um, because I believe like the best way to learn about a subject is to actually pursue it, research it, make projects, because it allows you to explore every single aspect of that subject without leaving anything out. So that's when I started um, merging my other interests with astronomy to try and make projects. Um, I'd say my inspiration is definitely just the people in the field. You know, I study environment and environment's kind of like sensitive thing right now because everyone's like you know the world's gonna like end blah 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 right and it's definitely a bit of a scary subject but seeing how many people there are who are trying to fix you know trying to help the environment and just still have hope that there's going to be a better future for us I think that's what inspires me like coming here and speaking to my professors over here you know like for in like you know in person all of them have hope that there's going to be something better for us in the future. And just like talking to them and just like knowing that there's so many people out there who think that there's going to be something better for us. That's what really inspires me. Uh, I think for me, I've just seen the need uh, of STEM and business and business. Almost everything has technology involved in it, whether that be for um, data analysis, marketing or finance. Um, so uh, I saw the need for, technology, not only in business, but also in the fight for climate change, like people have been saying here, you use technology in almost every single field. So um, I wanted to be part of that wave. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. Okay, so since we're running a little bit short on time, we're going to have just three panelists and to answer the next question. And then we'll have around another three for the other questions. Okay, so for the uh, next question is, what is the biggest challenge that you have faced? And how have you um, overcome it? Or how can you overcome it? So is there anyone who wants to pitch in to answer this question? 
I think I can start. Uh, biggest challenge definitely is myself when trying to pursue these uh, different projects of mine. I think in school, uh, you're told to learn uh, a certain subject and um, that can kind of stop you from doing your own like creative sort of outlets and stop that um, like curiosity when you're told to learn certain subjects all the time. Uh, and so, yeah, for me, it was like getting past that fear of kind of starting my own um, projects or business. Uh, and then once I got past that fear, I, I was able to learn so much and I'm still trying to get past that fear every single day. But uh, yeah, once you do it, once it gets a lot easier. Yeah, for sure. Who wants to answer next? Oh, also, right. I think uh, just like the stress of like making sure that I do well and just getting good grades. I think a lot of you would probably relate to that. You know, like there's like a huge stress of like, oh, you have to get good grades and to get into a good university. And that was like a huge thing for me, especially in high school. So I never got to enjoy the subjects that I learned. But like coming into university, you like you get to like learn all of the subjects. And it's so much better to just be able to like take your own time and enjoy the subjects that you're learning. So I understand like the stress and you guys are probably under a lot of stress, but I'd say you know, try to take a little bit of time to just like enjoy the subjects that you're doing because then otherwise it won't, it won't feel worth it. Yeah, very. Yeah, I think that's something that I definitely need to work on as well. So who wants to answer the question? I yes. can go ahead. Um, well, luckily for me, I'm in middle school, so I don't have to deal with stress of finals. Um, but I think for me, one thing is that uh, most of my learning has been um, self-driven by attending um, online courses, sometimes in person. But one thing I've noticed is like, I'm looking at this really fasting astronomy um, event that's gonna happen in a few days. And then I realize it's all the way across the world. And that happens a lot, especially often in the United States and Europe and very little conferences actually in Toronto happen. And actually I did not solve this problem, but um, the pandemic did. Um, it kind of turned into an advantage for me. Um, everything turned online. I was able to attend conferences just by going on my computer, logging into Zoom, um, whether it's like the Lunar and Planetary Science Conference, which I attended a couple of months ago, which was a great opportunity to meet other people interested in the same field. Thank you so much. Okay, so for our next question, I'm pretty sure a lot of people will be interested in this question. Um, what is one program, resource, or opportunity that you think uh, you want to recommend or you think more people should know about? So actually, I think this question is great and we should have everyone answer it. So uh, how about we start with Harini? Okay, sorry guys. So one program that I would definitely recommend to all of you guys is a program called the Knowledge Society. And it has like virtual cohorts as well as in-person ones. And it mainly focuses on taking you as a person and amplifying your interests. So as one of the other panelists mentioned as well, one of the things about school is you get to learn the subject, but it's not really the whole subject itself or you're too focused on grades. In this program, you actually get to dive deep into the subject you like. You get a bunch of opportunities, of course, earned opportunities, and you get to actually make projects and of course like we discussed one of the best ways to learn and actually withhold that knowledge is by making stuff so I would definitely recommend that um the program that I would recommend is here at UTM so it might be a little bit above some of your age um, but it's called IQ and it's entrepreneur in action and essentially it's an accelerator program to take your ideas and build them into fruition for a business or entrepreneurial endeavor um, but something that some of you might be able to do if we're not quite at that point is also just um, mindful consumption so if you have a subject that you're interested in you know watch documentaries talk to different people in your school talk to your friends try to build a community around your interests and by doing that and networking that way you'll also come across different opportunities and other programs that best suit your interests um so for me i i think i would recommend um it's not a, a program as such but it's something called an hackathon not sure if you guys heard of it but 
Hackathons are basically when you have like 48 hours and you form groups and you try to solve challenges. And one of them I would really recommend is the NASA Youth Space Apps. This as well relate to astronomy. But um, I think it's a really great hackathon. Like I've been participating in it since I was seven or eight years old. And um, you get to really build a network of lots of people around you. And best thing about NASA Youth Space Apps, it'll be like people here, um, everyone the similar age. And there's also lots of mentors who can help you and guide you through your way while you try to solve the sound challenges. So I think it's a really great opportunity for you to boost your knowledge in any specific skill or just have fun. Um, mine's also pretty specific to this university. Um, it's the ROP, Research Opportunity Program. So these are research programs they cover a lot of fields, but, you know, like science is obviously like one of the big ones. And, you know, you get to like work with your professors in the field and you get to like work with their research. This research might eventually go on to get published in like huge journals and stuff. So it's a really cool opportunity. And, you know, there's obviously other research opportunities at other universities as well. So I'd say no matter what university you're planning to go to, definitely look into it. And even if you're just like a first year, I'd say, you know, like even if you're a first year and you might not think you have a chance of getting in, talk to your professors and reach out and apply anyways, because you literally never know what might happen. Uh, this might sound a little weird, but I would recommend YouTube <laughs> um, because I think when, I'm, when I've been trying to create the, anything, I've just turned to YouTube and that's how I've learned so much of uh, how to create different businesses. So uh, all the information is online and uh, YouTube is a great um, source for that. I've even talked to professors at University of Toronto Mississauga and like very high professors at the top of their field and um, asked them like, what do you do when you're stuck uh, on a project and you don't know what to do? And they're like, honestly, I go to YouTube to try to figure it out. So yeah, I would recommend. Wow, those are some great resources. So um, if you're interested, definitely look into um, either like going to a hackathon, as Arushi said, or just looking for local opportunities uh, um, around you. And yeah, so um, my last question for you guys for today before our Q&A, so you guys can think of some questions to ask specific panelists or just um, uh or for all of the panelists, if you would like, but we will only select one panelist to answer them, okay? So our last question is, what is the one small thing that you guys think the audience can do when they get home to become a little bit more successful? So we can start with, let's start with Arushi. Sure, um, so one thing, um, when you go home, um, first wash your hands, of course, but like um, afterwards, um, I think think about what you're actually interested in, because I know lots of people who go into the STEM field, not because they're interested in it, but maybe their parents are interested in uh, their community or their friends are interested in it. But think about what you're actually passionate about, what you actually want to solve, because I think like if you're ever going to be going to STEM field, trying to solve challenges, you won't be able to do it unless you're actually passionate about the subject, because you will face lots of challenges. And only if you're passionate, if, if you can persevere enough, then you'll be able to solve it. So really think about what you're passionate about and what you want to solve. We can have Harani next. Adding on to what Arushi did mention, I would also say keep make sure that you really do have resilience and actually go for your for your ideas. Um, myself included, I have many times like had an idea or just wanted to do something and have not done it just because of the fear of unknown. So once you get home, of course, think about what you want to do. Make sure you have good intentions behind it and make sure you do it. Like a lot of people do say, taking that first step is always the hardest. So once you take it, well, that first step from there, it gets so, so much easier. So just, you know, go for it. Um, I'd say the number one recommendation I have would just be to try everything. You're all young and you don't have to have it figured out right now. So try everything like investigate all of your interests, research, don't research, talk to other people and really see what's pulling your interest because things will change. I didn't graduate with what I went into university for in my first year. Things change and your interests grow. So just try everything and keep an open mind and do it without putting a huge amount of pressure on yourself to have it figured out. Uh, Elijah? 
Um, yeah, echoing what everyone has said. Um, yeah, try out anything that you're interested in. I think uh, at this point, no experience that you're going to have will be wasted time, especially if it's something that you're interested in. So uh, whatever you're passionate about, try to um, watch a YouTube video, try to um, take any first step to um, go into something that you're interested in. Um, yeah, I think I'd just like add on to what everyone else said. It's just like, you know, I remember being your age and like, you know, being like so lost on what to do and like what I needed to do. And like, you don't have to go into like computer science or like medicine or anything to be like really accomplished in the STEM field. There's so many different fields out there. And I'd say just like, look at what you're interested in right now. Like for me, for example, I was interested in nature documentaries and I found the field I wanted to like research into from there. So I'd say just do that, you know, look at what you're interested in now and see if there's a job in that specific, like, you know, interest that actually interests you that you'd want to do for the rest of your life. Like, I think that's the, that's like my number one thing that I'd say to do. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sophia. Okay, so um, we're going to move on to our Q&A session. We're going to have, um, let's see, maybe three questions from the audience. So yes, over there. So does anyone want to answer that question? Um, the question was, how do you find time to, uh, what was it, sorry? Um, I'd say just like good management of time. It's kind of a boring answer, but just like, you know, schedule everything well and just like have a good management of time. It's definitely good to have that balance, right? You don't want to be just like too focused on school. So, you know, just like schedule everything well. You know, what I do is I just like write down my entire schedule for the week. So yeah, it's a pretty boring answer, but like, yeah, just like make sure to like have everything from beforehand, especially going into university, the workload's going to be a lot. So I'd say just plan everything beforehand, make sure you catch up to all of your like work and homework and stuff. So you have enough time to do anything else that you want. All right, any other questions? So um, we'll just have you introduce yourself, your grade and also um, your question and whether and who you want to ask your question to, yes? Can you repeat your question, please? My passion. That's the question. Um, I don't know. But yeah. Um, I would say the main way you could more of a look towards finding your passion, as mentioned before, is just trying everything out, especially while you are young. Um, of course, courses in school, maybe taking a wide variety, but as well as, you know, using your free time and looking to a wide variety of just anything you're passionate about. And I think um, something that also Kayla mentioned is you don't have to stick to just one thing. You can explore it. And if you don't like it, you always have the freedom to, you know, move on and change what you're um, ch change what you're focused in. So just give yourself that liberty to just explore whatever it is that you want. Great. Thank you, Harney. So we'll take one more question. Yes, from the back. Yes. Sure. Um, so programs um, wise, first is the hackathon. So I would recommend the NASA Youth Space Apps. Um, amazing hackathon around two days long. Um, and you get to really explore um, whatever team or challenge you want to do related to astronomy. Another thing I would recommend, I've mentioned this before as well, the Royal Astronomical Study of Canada. Um, or ask, um, and anyone can join it. And every year you're allowed to visit their observatory um, through a big telescope. And it comes with many other things too. Hey, okay, we have one more, we can fit in one more question, yes. Great question, so who wants to answer that one? Uh, 
Um, so for me, the transition from high school to university, it was the knowledge they still build you up like they do from grade nine to 10 to 11 to 12. But the shift that I found was more the volume, which um, one of our other panelists touched on. So instead of taking the courses the way you do about four, you're taking anywhere between you know, four to six courses and they're quite intense. You have midterms, finals, assignments for everything. So I think the best habits to have in place right now, um, definitely time management. So learning how to prioritize the tasks that you need to get out of the way first. And it can never hurt to start developing some good study habits as well. Um, so kind of going between whether you need to understand a topic or you can memorize it finding out what works best for you as fast as you can, essentially. All right, thank you so much. So that about wraps up our panel discussion. Thank you so much to our panelists. Okay, so now you guys are going to be off uh, doing your, um, uh, we're going to have another uh, speaker coming up. So we're going to uh, have a panelist exit. Let's give one more.